picking up where we left up, we're, we're being in a study for the past three weeks, and every, every Tuesday, on uh, fruit that's always in season. Say that phrase with me, fruit that's always in season. That's the difference between the natural, which is which it comes in season once a year. And if you miss the season, you missed it. You've got to wait till the next year. It says one season per year for different, different fruit. But the, 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 the fruit that we're talking about is the spiritual fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of God. And this is in every season of your life. Somebody say amen. 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 And not in the season of the natural fruit. But the season of your life, you the Bible says you're like a tree. And the tree has four seasons in it. You every year uh, a tree goes through what? Through spring, summer, fall, winter. And then comes round again again, spring, fall, summer, winter. Well, you have four seasons in your life. You have the season of spring in your life with your youth and, and God reminds us, remember thy creating the days of your youth. That's when you, you know, your younger life, you want to fall in love and get married and get an education and get your feet on the ground. And that's the spring. You got all the energy and you're healthy and you feel like you own the world and you got everything by the tail. I mean, you got, I mean, you're the spring in your life. And you've got the summer in your life. And a lot of folks don't know to, do, does not know how to adapt to their seasons. So they get into trouble. Because uh, when you should have been moving on from summer into fall, you still want to stay in spring. Or you want to still stay in fall. And, and uh, that season already moved on. And so you're like, I don't know, I'm not here no there. Instead of flowing with God in your season, looking for the next season, I'm looking forward for the winter in my life. I'm not afraid of it. I'm excited about it. Amen. Yes, I am. Praise God. I am. Because, because uh, for the child of God, the Bible says uh, the, uh, your, your latter end is greater than your former years. Your latter years is greater than your former years as a believer. For even in your old age, you shall bring forth fruit to the glory of God. Now that's not for the sinner or not for the wicked or the evil. God said for the wicked and for the evil, they're the worst days of your life. They're the evil, call them evil. They're the, but they're the worst days, they're the evil days of your life. For the wicked, those who don't Walk with God and trust God. So we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit. I want to go with you with Scripture. Turn with me in Scripture. If you will. Uh, Romans chapter 12. Correction. Romans 8 verse 12. Romans 8 verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are dead as not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Sons are led and not driven. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, let's back up. If children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may be also, that we may also be glorified together. That's beautiful. The book of Galatians, Galatians 5, verse 2, verse 22. Galatians 5, 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, 
long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control, self discipline. Against such there is no law. For this for these these fruit, the fruit of the spirit operate, saith me, in the grace of God, not under the law, in the grace of God. And those who are Christ have what? They have what? Crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. And then in closing in scripture, the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 5, one verse, Ephesians 5, verse 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. There's no phony thing here. Is in goodness, God is good. Goodness, righteousness, and truth. Father, bless the word today. Let it speak to us, let it minister to us, that it may bring forth fruit in our lives to the glory of God. We give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit is mentioned in Romans, Ephesians, and Galatians, in which we have read. Spiritual fruit is the identification of the Christian. How does God identify you? By the fruit in your life. In the body of Christ, there are those who bring forth fruit from 1 to 30, level 30 to 60, level 60 to the 100 fold. The 100 fold, say with me, is discipleship or servanthood. They're the same thing, servanthood. Jesus exemplifies servanthood. Paul reiterates discipleship, discipleship, servanthood. Then you, you are always a servant. Continue to grow. Press it on. You come into what? Friendship. That's relationship. Jesus said, I no longer call you servant. Now I call you friend. So you come in that re relationship, that intimacy relationship. Servant, you don't share your heart with a servant. You pay the servant. Re different relationships. That's intimacy. Hear what God says. I open my heart to you. I share with you what my Father is sharing with me. I reveal to you. That's relationship. You grow into that friendship. Abraham was a friend of God. Moses was a friend of God. When you look at all the patriots of old, they were intimate with God. Then you come into pentacle as what? Say with me, sonship. But not just sonship, say with me, a fully grown, mature son. Under them gave he what? Power. You need the Holy Spirit, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of all. We come into what? We grow in. Most churches don't share the journey, say with me, the journey of becoming. That's from grace to glory. It's not just church. You come to church to learn to grow, to worship, to know more of God. From, come into grace, from salvation, from grace, to glory, which is the glory of Christ. And Christ brings you from, from glory, which is in Christ, to the Father, which is the, ex, say, the excellent glory, from glory to glory. No man cometh to the Father but by me. I will present you to the Father, faultless, blameless, holy to the Father. So it's important. Most churches don't lay out the format like the blueprint. You know, like you build a house, you see the blueprint. Well, God's Word has a blueprint and the churches don't lay out the format because a lot of them don't know. They're not there in their own life, in their own walk uh, uh, because uh, the Holy Spirit has to has to reveal, has to point this out to you. The scripture that you have is filled with, say with me, puzzles. Uh, puzzles, uh, like connecting the dots and puzzles. So that's why you, 
you might read a chapter and find this piece doesn't go there. That doesn't fit here. That, that, where did that come from? That, but it's there in the same chapter. That doesn't fit. That fits into another puzzle. And so you have to, uh, but, but unless you're looking for that puzzle, that's why it's good when you read the word, take a pad and a pen and write down if you're looking for certain things. And, and the Holy Spirit will help you. This has saved me. The, this is the rhema word. This is the rhema word where the Holy Spirit has to reveal to you the hidden truth. Okay? Where you're able to now, whoa, I, you know, I read that. And, you know, I, I didn't see that all these years. And look at that. You know, you begin to see some things. You see? But, but you just read it. Uh, you had eyes, but you can see it. Ears, you don't hear it. A mind, you can't perceive it. Because it's hidden from you. Okay. Why did God hide it? He hid it from the prudent and the wise. The Bible tells us. Those who just want to know knowledge. To know knowledge. To be puffed up with knowledge. But don't care about walking in the knowledge. To become like him. Okay. So he hid it. So preachers don't see it. You'd be surprised the people I talk with. They think I'm off a wall. You know because... They're in basic, they're in basic salvation, you see. And and they they don't even know the, the the blueprint in God's word for you and I, for man. They're still preaching basic salvation. Okay? And and nothing wrong with that, but that Paul calls it say with me, elementary. Even Paul in scripture, he said, move on from the elementary stage of salvation and repentance, and of dead works. Move on from that and grow. Amen. Come into, just like you grow from, from a kid into a grown man, a grown woman, in maturity and responsibility, God wants you to what? That you may what? Grow up into Christ, into the full measure, into the full stature, into the fullness of God and of Christ. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. That you may image your Father, image, image Christ. All right, now the fruit of the Spirit, God measures you by your fruit. By their fruit, ye shall know them. God said, you'll even bring forth fruit in your old age. So God will measure your life by the fruit. And the fruit is the measuring rod, that Jesus said, that your fruit might remain, remain where God sees you. It's where you are, and God love you where you are, okay? And and just like if you have a child, God, you have different age children, you deal with them according to their ages, right? right. Come on, God, right? Well, God does the same thing with us, okay? Because you have not, you could only speak what you know. You don't fix it up there. This, say, this is my time. This is your time. This is our time. Old Testament, that was the time of the Old Testament for the Jews, this is now what? Gentile. Say Gentile. Gentile time. But the Gentile time is going to come to an end. And it's going to go back to the Jew. Because God's not yet finished with the Jew. The Jew's going to be saved. Somebody say amen. 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 Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Amen. And then we're going to. Uh, 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 we'll go into the kingdom. We'll be the government of the kingdom. We'll set up the kingdom. Reign in the kingdom. Only, say only the overcomers. Only the overcomers. Not all the believers. Only the overcomers. According to Revelations. That's one of the rewards of the overcomers. Is to come back with Christ. And to reign with him in the millennial kingdom. Read it in Revelation. That's given to the overcomers. In fact all the promises is given to the overcomers. And God challenges. Remember God challenges. Stay with me. The church to what? Overcome. And to him that overcome it. To him that overcome it. To him that overcome it. To him. To the church has done it. To him that overcome it. Shall receive thee. To him. To all the seven churches. He challenged them to be what? Overcomers. He challenged the church. The, the church to come into what? Kingdom. He said those that are. Those that are born. Those who are not born again cannot see the kingdom. Those that are born again see the kingdom. And then you cannot come into the kingdom, but by what? By the water and by what? 
by the Spirit. Okay? And so you're, you're come into the kingdom. That's, that's through water baptism is the manifestation of the cross. That's the death, burial, resurrection, ascension, reigning with him. All that, that's the cross. Somebody say amen. Will you die to you, die to your flesh, die to self, die to the sin, die to the world, die to the kingdom of Satan. And you die, you, uh, uh, Jesus literally died for us. Well, we don't physically die, but we say with me, I die with him in faith for what he literally died for me. Okay? So he said, so remember the Bible said, everything of the spiritual must be of faith. That which is not of faith is sin. Okay? So all of the spiritual, why is it is of faith? Because you can't see the spiritual. It's like the wind. The wind bloweth, you don't see it. Not in the, because you're of the earthy. In an earthly environment, in an earthly body, in an earthly life. Now you'll be, uh, uh, the rebirthing is when this body go back to the ground. And you slip away. You go to be with God. And then comes the change, the transformation in a new house, in a new life. Not an earthly life, but now what? An eternal life. A spirit life. A resurrected body. Uh, uh, everything is new. You can't take this world up here because this world is going to be burnt up. Okay. So, so the eternal is more real than this earthly life. Okay. So the fruit of the Spirit is mentioned. The fruit of the Spirit is the identification of the Christian. Whereby, wherefore by their fruit ye shall know them. Matthew 7.20 by this love shall all men know that you are my disciples. We know that we have passed from death into life because we have love the brethren. 1 John 3, 14. We're proved to be what we are by what we bear, not by the multitude of things that we do not bear. Good lesson is that is of the fig tree. When Jesus came to the fig tree, the fig tree is supposed to be what? Berry. It was seasoned, supposed to be full of figs. He was hungry. And he looked through the fig leaves and there was nothing. And he cursed it. Because it was it was it was a facade. It was phony. It, it was deceitful. And 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 it was disappointing. He <laughs> was hungry. And you're supposed to be having figs and it was that time of season. And not one fig on you, you know. That was, that was abnormal, you know. And Jesus cursed it. So I say, he was coming back. The disciples saw the withered fig tree. And they, they were amazed. How soon has the tree withered and died, you know. So uh, a beautiful account of that we read last week about in the book of, uh, about the fig tree in the, uh, in Matthew 21, 18, 20. They'll give you a beautiful, beautiful picture there. We bear, what we bear determines by the seed within us, not by our environment or the pressures upon us. Now, what what what, what seed are we talking about? The word. Say the word. The seed, Jesus said, the seed is the word. Thy word have I hid in my heart so I might not sin against you. So the seed is the word. Now it's up to you according to your desire to cultivate say good ground. Good ground. Okay? When a farmer is going to want, uh, want to, uh, uh, to prepare the field he has to take out all the rocks all the boulders and all the rocks and which is dirt, you know, and every year he has to flip that soil. He has to turn that soil. And then every, every, uh, the Bible said every seven years, you skip a year, let the ground rest. Let the nutrients and everything go back in the ground, let it rest. And, uh, uh, that, that's, that's Bible. Some people, that's right. Uh, uh, some people does it uh, every three years, but God's word said every seven years. 
but some farmers do it every three acres. And so uh, the seed, you know, uh, uh, the seed according to your heart and your love for God and your obedience and your faithfulness that will determine uh, uh, your love and, and your faithfulness in the word. Uh, study to show yourself approved unto God. Work would need not be ashamed, but rightfully dividing the word of God and living and walking in the word of God will begin to cultivate the soil. And according to the richness of the soil will determine the amount of fruit you will bring forth, whether it's 1 to 30, 30 to 60, 60 to the 100 full, even continuing bringing forth fruit. What we bear determined by the seed within us, not by our environment or the pressures of life or the pressure of the, this world. Yeah, people say, well, you, you know, I can't do this because of this and that. That has nothing to do with it. God's word through the power of the Holy Spirit, and no matter what your environment is, he could put you wherever and you will shine. If you've got the goods. But if you don't have the goods, then you struggle. Okay? And so what we are determined, not by our, our environment as a, as a Christian, but by the seed. Because everything that God has ordained for your life eternally, in this life and the life together, is packaged in that seed. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like, it's like uh, everything that will bring forth Apples, a continuation, is packaged in that little seed will come forth to sprout, come into a tree, come into apples, and every year the apple the, uh, uh, will bring forth more apples as the pruning and cutting and the maturing of the tree will bring forth sweeter, more delicious, bigger apples, abundance of apples, but all came from what? A seed. A seed. A seed. Think about that. Somebody say amen. amen. Well, well, look about in our own lives. I usually say uh, 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 everything everything that's living comes from a seed. I want you to hear that. Everything that has to be re reborn comes from a seed. <laughs> even even the worm in the ground, everything, even the even the botany, even the trees, even the greenery has to come through a seed. The corn, all the vegetation, everything has to come from the seed. That's amazing. That's amazing. Hallelujah. Because it has to what? It has to reproduce over and over and over. The only, in eternity, there's no reproduction. It's a difference. Everything is what? Nothing dies. It's eternal. And it's a one-time creation. All the angels, everybody, one-time creation. Think about that. The spirit never dies. Even we don't die. The body dies. Because the body is not final. God put a warranty on it because of sin. 70, if I read of strength, 84 score 80. Anything over 80, you're remaining. The Bible calls it, say, say with me, you're, I'm remaining. That's Bible. You're remaining. Now, what am I remaining for? Because my time is over. So you need to go to God and say, God, why am I still here? What do you have for me? What do you want me to do? I'm remaining. You have purpose. That's why you're still here. Okay? The majority of people go from 60, 50, 60, 70, 80, 70. Most of them, most of them go in the 70s. Okay? And you over 80... You remaining, God has purpose for you. Find out what's your purpose. I'm, I'm dead serious about that. Okay. Because the Bible tells us you are remaining. You should have been gone. Because God's order is the most. 80 if you take care of the body. Okay. Isn't that amazing? God's word is like, wow. I mean, he, he leaves nothing out. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he covers the whole gamut of humanity and their existence. Amen. 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 Even with us, the seed, 
that everything comes, even the children, your seed, your children from your seed. Everything that's living, that's reproducing is what? From the seed. Amen. Hallelujah. Spiritual fruit bearing is began when Christ comes in our life. It can and should be increased with deeper Christian living and walking out the word of God in your life. In fact, God said you shall bring forth fruit, more fruit, much fruit. The fruit of the Spirit will be borne by all who have borne the all the well, the fruit of the Spirit will be born, B-O-R-N-E, by all who have been B-O-R-N of the Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Ghost increases the level of fruit bearing, and it, and it brings the sweetness in the fruit, the ripening of the fruit, the deliciousness in the fruit. Hallelujah. By the Spirit. Somebody say amen. Now, now, without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you still bring forth fruit. At the beginning, that's the beginning stage of the fruit. But the, but the, I mean, when you're born of the Spirit, that's why God said, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. No man can confess that Jesus is Lord by the Holy Spirit. And, and, uh, but the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the fullness of the Spirit. And, and through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it sweetens the fruit, ripens the fruit, makes the fruit uh, delicious, uh, appealing, uh, edible to God, where God wants to come to you and just feed on your life. He tells us that. Amen. Uh, you know, God says what? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How many of you like to feed upon the Lord? Amen. Well, flip the coin. God loves to feed on you. He likes to come to you and taste of your life. See how sweet your fruit is. See how see how sweet your love is, and your joy, and your peace, and your long suffering, and your gentleness, and your kindness, and your patience. Yeah. Oh yes, Amen, Amen, Amen. The fruit of the spirit is critical in our spiritual development, according to John sixteen seventeen thirteen, John three five eight, and Romans eight and nine. The fruit of the Spirit is born of the Spirit. It's born of the Spirit, not of the flesh. That which is flesh is flesh. That which is Spirit is Spirit. It is not natural. It is not the natural disposition or personality or the individual. And not by your makeup. It is divine. The fruit of the Spirit is divine. It's by the Spirit. It's not of you. Isn't that beautiful? No natural tendencies, similarities, or nothing, nothing should be mistaken as to the fruit of the Spirit. Nevertheless, God does not use the natural abilities to fulfill the spiritual abilities. That which is flesh is flesh, that which is spirit is. Is spirit. The fruit of the spirit is divided in three categories. There are nine. We don't we don't call them fruits. We call them fruit of the spirit. But it's, uh, there are nine fruit in three categories. First, the fruit of emotion, which is what love, joy, peace. That's the emotion in humanity. Love, joy, peace, your emotions, the fruit of the Spirit. Another category is the fruit of relationship. And this is all the makeup of man. Emotion, relationship, attitude. Say attitude. All right? Let's get into it. Fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. Fruit of relationship, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness relationship see you move on from you from just you and you come into what relationship with brethren with the body of Christ yeah. with the church with one another yeah. with your family with your wife with a friend with the church yeah. with humanity you know and so the fruit of emotion love 
joy, peace, the fruit of relationship, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. The fruit of attitude, faith, meekness, temperance, faith. In the spiritual, remember these are what? Spiritual fruit. Faith. He that cometh to God must come believing that he is, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The fruit of attitude, faith, meekness, humility. And humility will bring many things. Obedience, gentleness, all that will come through humility. Weakness is not meekness. Okay? And then temperance. Temperance is what? Self-discipline. God said, he who knows how to control his spirit is he that taketh the city. So if you know how to control yourself, control your flesh. Remember, remember, you flesh cannot control the flesh. And God knew that. So God gave us what? God gave us the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the path through the cross comes what? Spiritual circumcision. What is the purpose of spiritual circumcision? It's the cutting away, say with me, it's the cutting away of the body of death, which is the flesh, from the spirit. That's real freedom. Somebody say amen. Because you came tied to the hip of the flesh. You, you, you came tied to that. Born that way. You are born in sin, conceived in that, shaped in iniquity. And so, uh, that's why you, the flesh, the Bible said what? The flesh warreth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And there's a battle going on. Who's going to reign in your life? Who's going to govern your life? Who's going to control you? Okay. And so, uh, flesh, flesh cannot discipline flesh. In my flesh dwelleth what? No good thing. So how do we control the flesh? By the spirit. How is that made possible? Through the cross, through spiritual circumcision, where Paul said in Romans 8, said, if by the Spirit, now you can put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. Amen. That's beautiful. The fruit of attitude. And, and, and uh, Sister Meyer, yeah. what we see here, we see also the triunity of God. Got a great teaching on the triunity, not the trinity. The trinity is also triunity. You triunity, you trinity. But God is, what I'm saying, God is always three dimensions. The church is three dimensions. You three dimensions. All that he does, three dimensions. All his work, three dimensions. Most of the church is in the first dimension. Like you got a three-story house, then the first floor. Sad, but that's where it is. You know, you might have some stragglers going up the step to the second floor, but the majority, the majority of church is in basic salvation. You your pocket, little pockets of groups that's pressing higher, pressing into God. The remnant. Here you have here what? The fruit of the spirit, triunity, fruit of emotion, fruit of relationship, fruit of attitude. And then you have what? The fruit of emotion is in three. Love, joy, peace. Yeah. Through the relationship is in three. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. Fruit of attitude is in three. Faith, meekness, temperance. Yeah. So you see it over and over and over. We see, uh, uh, let me just point out a few to you. Uh, in the word of God, you have uh, the milk of the word, yeah. the meat of the word, the rainbow word. So the milk of the word, which is the gospel, the life and ministry of Christ. The uh, meat of the word, the meat of the word, the epistles. What is the epistles? The epistles is what build found doctrinal, foundational truth, the walls and the foundation. And then you have what? The rhema word that is revealed by the spirit of God. Paul calls this the more perfect way or, or the revealed truth. Somebody say amen. Isn't that beautiful? 
That is very, very, very beautiful. Amen. And uh, I want us to at least touch on three of them. If we can touch on, uh, we're going to go over some of these. Let's, let's see if we can cover love, joy, and peace tonight. I don't know if we're able to, but we'll see. Love. Israel was commanded to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. In Deuteronomy 6, 4, 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. Christ expanded upon that commandment and included our fellow man. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is likened unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, these two commandments fulfill all the law and all the prophets. Christ calls us to love the unlovable. It's not enough just to love those who love you. He said the world loved those who loved themselves, who loved them. But he said, I want you to love. I want you to love all, all. And we can't love, we can't love everybody and all in our flesh, even loving your enemies. We can't do that in the flesh. But through the pure agape love of God, God's love expands and grows. It, uh, uh, that will encompass all the things that we need to cover with the love of God. Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. You see, Christ calls us to love the unlovable and a love that is beyond the natural inclination, goes beyond your flesh tendencies. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you may be filled with all of the fullness of God, Ephesians 3.19. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Now let that, don't just gloss over that, let that sink in. That's a lot. I mean, I mean, I mean, let's, 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 let's slow down and go over that one more time. <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> Love your enemies. What? Your enemies. Love your enemies. Don't just love them that love you. The world does that, he said. The world does that. You're not the world. You're me. You know. Love your enemy. Then he said, bless them that curse you. Yes. Let that sink in. Mm -hmm. Can you bless somebody that, that, that curse you? Yes. Do good to, see this is kingdom here. Mm -hmm. Do good to them that hate you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully uses you wow. and persecutes you. Pray for them. Pray for them. The Bible said what? Love covers what? A multitude of faults, flaws, and failures, and problems. The love, love covers it. If we will allow the love of Christ that even surpasses knowledge. Like what? You might not understand it, but the love just covers it. And the love brings healing. The love bring the love bind just like the the vase it binds up the graces of God in your life. But I say to you, love, love. Let, let me move on here and talk about a little bit more about this this good love. Love is of the spirit. Did you know love is not of man? Man did not think of love. Man did not initiate love. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Okay? So it is, you can only love through God. You can talk about it, but you can't really live it 
and walk in it and exercise it and say, God is in your life. We love, say with me, by the Spirit. By the Spirit. You love by the Spirit. The Spirit of God is that it's in you. Remember, I talk with, remember this is one of what? The fruit of the Spirit. The, fruit, the, the Spirit of God will what? Will develop that love. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost will mature that love and make that love sweet and delicious and, 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 and edible and enjoyable. Like you want to be around that person because that, that genuine love is not phony baloney. It's not, it's not a facade. It's not a, a no, no, no. It is genuine Seven days a week, 365 days a year, you're the same like Christ. Yesterday, today, and forever. That love, because that comes from God. That's the love by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit produces love, joy, and peace in the lives of the believer. Understand the importance of and seek to have in our life love, joy, and peace by the Holy Spirit. A sinner can experience godly love, everlasting love, and profound peace only through Christ in faith. Because everything of the Spirit is of faith. He can get saved. Isn't that wonderful? He can find Christ. And he can come into, yes, he can come into that joy, into that peace into that love, hallelujah. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, not just talking about it, not in word, but in deed and in truth. Remember the fruit of the Spirit is in our what? Goodness, righteousness, and truth. So the love should be manifest what? In truth, in truth. Not like Judas who said, I love you, Master, and kiss you and put the knife in you. You know, and sold his Lord in the Garden of Gethsemane for 30 pieces of silver. Love by the, Paul says, put on love. Just like he said, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on love. Love is one of the garments of the Spirit. Hallelujah. I've got a teaching entitled the garments that Christ would have you put on and wear. One of them is, the first garment is Christ. Put on the garment of Christ. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Put on the garment of love, the garment of the spirit, the garment of humility, the garment of righteousness, the robe of righteousness, the garment of praise. Come on. Hallelujah. The garment of power. Amen. Huh? I get the garment of armor. Come on. Uh, uh, you, can, you can title that teaching, Get Dressed for Success. <laughs> <laughs> get dressed for success that's right amen but the fruit of the spirit the fruit of the Holy Spirit the work which he presents within accomplishes is love joy joy is gladness peace and patience and an even temper forbearance kindness goodness Benevolence, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, humility, self-control, self-restraining, a continuance in your life. Wow. Hallelujah. Against such there is no law that can bring a charge against it. For these are manifest in the grace of God. Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. Now Paul, hear what Paul said in Colossians 3, 12 and 14. He said, clothe yourself. Remember, Sister Maya talked about the garments. Yeah. Clothe yourself, therefore, as God's own chosen ones, his own picked representative. You are his own pick representative who are purified, holy, well-beloved by God himself by putting on behavior marked by tender heartedness pity mercy and mercy kind feeling a lowly opinion of yourself gentle ways and patience which is tireless 
and long suffering and has the power to endure whatever comes with good temperament. I like that. Hallelujah. Ah, God is remolding the old self into a new man. A new man. Hallelujah. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, a new creature. Hallelujah. He said, above all these things, put on love and enfold yourself with the bond of perfectness, which binds everything completely in ideal harmony. Hallelujah. Yeah. But the fruit of the Spirit will bring your life in full harmony with yourself, with your fellow man, and with God. Hallelujah. Well, your life is not disjointed. And you're not uh, uh, overbearing in one area and need some fixing in this area. You, you are, your life is measured. Your life is, ba I like this word, balance. Balance. Now, the gifts of the Spirit, which is the nine gifts of the Spirit, and the many more, uh, many of them, many, many church folks like the gifts of the Spirit. But when it comes to the fruit of the Spirit, if you just have the gifts of the Spirit and you don't have the gifts, your life will not be balanced. Okay? So, so the fruit of the Spirit will balance you. If you put a car on your, if you put a, a tire, a wheel on your car or your truck, it's not balanced. You know what will happen? Your truck will, will go wiggy wumpy Not only that, your tire will wear crazy. And, and before you realize it, you'll have a blowout. Uh, uh, you'll feel, if it's not balanced, you'll feel the, the bump in it. You go, -do -do -do, the bump in it. And it'll wear crazy. The, and that has to be balanced. And, and uh, in, even with the tire, in, in spinning, it has to spin perfect. Yep. Has to be otherwise the wheel, the wheel will go like this. Well, so with this with our lives, your life will become disjointed, yep. out of focus, yep. uh, uh, not balanced, and you'll have problems with your life. And so God knows what He's doing. How He? I mean, I mean He. I mean He. He is so perfect in everything He does, like a well oil machine. Uh, in, in the lives of humanity, fixing and repairing and restoring and making us what in harmony with ourselves. Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. And, and we all life has melody and song and joy and peace. That comes from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Well, this not a drag or uh, a drudgery or, or or the stressing. All this take care of that. Joy, joy, peace, love, hallelujah. Above all these, put on love and fold yourself with the bond of perfectness which binds everything together completely in ideal harmony. Romans 5.5, 5, Paul said, such hope never disappoints or deludes or shames us. For God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. So God in his love, God who is love, the great love, he has poured out himself in us. Hallelujah. So the love that we know is his love. We're just the, the vessel. And the channel, and the channel is that we continue to let that love, we don't whore up the love or keep the love. We just a, become a channel where he, love, the source, flows in us. And then we want to continue to flow out to others. Come on. And the more we give, then God has to pour more in you. Come on. Hallelujah. He created you in a teaching well. Come on, not just with the tongues, but everything that he is, he continues to flow in you. 
Only, only when we walk away from God do we become in wanting where we hew out our own systems, broken systems that cannot hold no water and we die of thirst in the desert because we walked away from God. If any man first, let him come unto me and drink and he that believeth on me as the scriptures have said, out of his being shall flow rivers, love, joy, peace, gentleness, long-suffering, patience, all the nine gifts of the Spirit that we've, that, that, that we've read in Scripture, and to others, because others need that love. Others need that peace and that long-suffering and that gentleness and that patience. You need that in your family. You need it in your marriage. You need that in the body of Christ. You need that on your job. You need that wherever you go. And many who don't have that, they see that in you. They see that you don't get angry, that you don't get upset, that you don't cuss and swear, and, and you don't, you're patient, you're long-suffering. Your love is sweet. It's not sour love, but it's sweet. They want to be around you. They want a taste of your life. What makes you who you are? You're different. You understand what I'm saying? They begin to look at you. You don't have to say you're Christian. Nah, just let your light shine. Just be the fruit. Amen. Just let the fruit of the Spirit flow through you. Amen. I let the love of God just be that channel flowing through others. Because many don't know. Many don't have. Many don't know. That's, that's right. That's right. Many don't know what it is to give love. Many don't even know to say it. I, I'm, I've been there. I know. I know. To say, listen, I love you. I mean it without an agenda. I love you. Brother, I love you. Sister, I love you. You know, beside your family, you can say that. How they love one another. The church loved one another. That was one of their hallmarks. That was one of their witnesses. How the world took note. How they love one another. And that love was not based on race or color or skin, or possession, stuff, or things, or your, where you are in life. No, 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 no. That was the pure, undulterated, agape love of God. For God is love. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. Hallelujah. You can't love your spouse Without the love of God. You can't love your children. Your children can act them, get on your nerve and get, get you know. But, but you love, you have that, that, that parental love. But you have that in God. You have that love. That love. That colors. That, oh, hallelujah. That, that love. That love where you forgive. That covers all the acting up. That love. Hallelujah. Well, God, same way with God. He's our Heavenly Father. We're His kids. And when we act up, it's His love. He doesn't brush you off. No. If we come back to Him, He'll kiss the hurt away. He'll pour the oil. He'll bind up the wound. And He'll He'll pat you in your little butt. He said, now go back out there. You will be all right. Amen. You will play it again. Hallelujah. Amen. You forget the hurt. Amen. Amen. Because, because, because you love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John, 1 John 4, 7, 8. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is, is a spring from God. I like this. And my time is gone. Just about gone. And he who loves his fellow man is what? Begotten, born of God. And is coming progressively to know and understand God. To perceive and to recognize and to get a better and clearer knowledge of Him. Love. He who does not love has not become acquainted with God. He does not and never did know Him. For God is love. 
in John 13, 34, 35, I give you a new commandment that you should love one another just as I have loved you. So you too should love one another. And then he says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love, because you have love one for another. If you love one another, if you keep on showing love among yourselves. John 59, 13, I have loved you, God said. Isn't it beautiful? I have loved you just as the Father has loved me, Jesus said. And he reminds us, abide in my love. Continue in his love with me. If you keep my commandments, if you continue to obey my instructions, you will abide in my love and you will live on in it just as I have obeyed my Father's instructions. And my father's commandments. And I live on in his love. We live on in his love. I have told you these things. That my joy and delight may be in you. And that your joy may. That your joy and gladness may be full measured. And complete. And overflowing. You got that overflowing well again. Overflowing. God is more than enough. Hallelujah. He's not stingy. Ah, he's not selfish. He's abundant. That overflowing, outpouring love, peace, joy, all oh, long-suffering, patience, gentleness, goodness, kindness, faith. I want to tell you, it goes on. Hallelujah. This is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. No one, no one has greater love. No one has shown stronger affections than to lay down his life or to give up his own life for his friends. In 1 John 4, 7 through 11. And I'm going to close with this. Beloved, love one another. For love it springs from God. It springs like a fountain. And he who loves his fellow man is begotten, born of God, and is coming progressively to know and understand God and to perceive and to perceive and to recognize and get a better, clearer knowledge of him. Wow. In this in this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us. And sent his son to be the perpetuation of our sins. Yeah. Beloved of God so loved us very much. We ought also to love one another. Yeah. Love not in word. But in deed. And in truth. In 1 John 3, 16 through 18. By this we come to know progressively to recognize. To perceive I'm, uh -uh. Mm, I just feel his presence. To understand the essential, that love, the essential love that he laid down his life for his home. He laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for those who are our brothers and sisters in him. If anyone has this world's goods, the resources for sustaining life, and sees his brother and his fellow believer in need, yet closes his heart of compassion against him, God said, how can, how dwelleth the love of God in him? How can the love of God live and remain in him? Little children, let us not love merely in theory or in speech, but in deed. And in truth, in practice, and in sincerity, and in closing, in Luke, we're going to cover the, just love for tonight. Time, time, time's gone. But in closing, in Luke 6, 27, 28. But I say to you who are listening now to me, 
in order to heed, to make it a practice to love your enemies. Treat well. Do good. Act nobly toward those who detest you and pursue you with hatred. Invoke blessings upon and pray for the happiness of those who curse you, who implore God's blessing, favor upon those who abuse you, who rival, reproach, disparage, and high-handedly misuse you. Love, love, for love covers a multitude. Wow, wow, we're talking about fruit that's always in season. Thank God for that love. Thank God for that delicious, sweet, mature, developed fruit of love. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And if you'd be around a believer with the fruit of the blood, you could pretty much pick it out. You can see it. It's like you're the tree. You can see, oh man, look, look at the look at the love, the sweet love. Look at the joy, the, the peace. You, you can see in the life of the believer. You can see the fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's like you want to be around that person. You, you want to you wanna hear what they have to say. Yeah. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. In, in fact, in fact, Sister Myra, love is the vase that hold, or the bowl that hold all the fruit. Love. Love is the bowl. You got to have a bowl to hold all the fruit. Well, love is the bowl. Because without love, you can't have gentleness, patience, goodness, long-suffering, joy, peace. You can have none of that without what? The love. So love is the bowl that holds the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Like, 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 love is the, love is the vase that holds the flower. But we're talking about fruit tonight. Love is the bowl that holds all the fruit. Father, we thank you tonight for this word. Thank you tonight for your spirit. Thank you. We'll, Father, we just stand in awe. And we're taken aback of your provision. That which you have provided for the believer. We stand in awe, amazed, and, and wonder. Oh, in amazement of the provision of God in our life. You, you thought of everything. There's nothing that escapes you. And Father, this we want you to know. We are thankful. We're grateful. And we're very much appreciative. Thank you for the fruit of the Spirit. Thank you for the love of the Spirit. Thank you for the love of God. The fruit of love is of the Spirit. That which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. I thank you. And Father, we as a church, we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.